Doctor Bones, Doctor Bones, Doctor Bones, Doctor Bones. What's happening guys? This is Dr. Bones Live and today I have a special interview. My guests are Jonah and Jess who are Living Dead Girl. Welcome to the show guys. Thank you for having us. Hi there. Absolutely. So guys, I'll tell you how I first came upon you guys and I saw you guys on, on, a, on a fruit bat, uh, Ralph's Life blog. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw that because like I actually interviewed him before, him and Grum uh, Grumbling Gargoyle, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. Okay. But uh, I, I saw it because I... He, I really respect his, his choices of music, so I always check out his blogs and read his blogs and see what he's come up with next. And I came upon you guys, and it's like, okay, this should be very interesting, because I, I read, the, read about it first, and I played the tune, I was like, you know, I, I was very, very impressed by it. So I want to I get an interview with the guys, which I'm glad you guys agreed to do. So first and foremost, um, you guys played together for the first time in 2014. Now, both of you have different backgrounds, and uh, we'll go with you first, Jess, since you've got uh, piano training. So when did you kind of decide to get into music and start uh, kind of taking a direction of music that you took? Uh, for this band or just in just, general? Just in general. Just, um, kind of always wanted to do music. I started playing piano when I was eight um, and then did various different projects. Um, but this one's kind of the most exciting and I think the best one um, that we found. Yeah, it's, just, it's been really exciting, really. Now, uh, and Jonah, with Jonah, with you, with, with uh, you're a guitar player by trade. Now, yeah. uh, same question to you. Did you like? Did something kind of spark when you were younger, saying, "You know what? I really want to do this, and this is this is what I'm gonna do." And you just start kind of. Did you just pick up the guitar, guitar and start playing, or did someone kind of influence and kind of encourage you to pick it up? Or yeah, it was very much on my own. Really, no one around me was playing guitar that I knew of, but I just knew that I wanted to be in a band, and I knew that the at first I wanted to be a singer, then I wanted to be a guitarist, and so I kind of done everything that I can. But I think now I've realized with this band is that I just like. Uh, I love writing songs and I like crafting um, music with someone and that's really what I'm into. So now in this band, uh, we're all playing keys, we're all programming drums, we're all playing guitar and it's just about getting the best song possible. But yeah, I can bring in guitar into this band, but this band's really kind of taught me about songwriting and that's what I'm really passionate about. Now with your songwriting, it kind of leads into my next question here. With your songwriting, what's, what is a process that you two go about? Do you, do you write first and then bring it to the table, or do you kind of co-collaborate, or how does that work? Go ahead. We're kind of antisocial. One, <laughs> one of us will start something and give it to the other one, and we'll kind of secretly work on it and then kind of pass it back and forward. Um, yeah, that's the way we tend to normally do it. Yeah, it's a weird process because the normal way of doing it is, you know, all get in a room and see what comes out. But I think uh, we'd much rather take one idea and then go away with it really have that time on your own to fine tune it see what's you know what you can pull out of it and then that's good because you know you want to impress the other person you want to you know bring your best thing to the table so we write like that just passing it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until we until we just think it's perfect absolutely but you know what uh there there is a sort of conventional way but not conventional because everybody has their own style of writing and yeah. uh it's it's always interesting to me because Everybody, I always they they come to the, the the same the same end being they've written a song, but they've gone about it in different ways. It's always interesting to, for me to hear what ways they go about it because, like I said, everybody has their own way of doing it. I uh, you two, and there there's a, a another uh, um, band of the uh, UK called Rainbird, and he he wrote a song that he, that uh, came from a dream. Cool. You know, so it just it can come about any ways, and it's always interesting to me to see 
how how just 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 basically the, the, the general way it's done because i mean i don't want to call it generic because there really isn't a generic uh form even though we'd like to think so it's not like that but that makes the music that much more yeah. interesting yeah. i think sometimes uh we've been doing it for so long now that if we both sit down you know either one of us at a, at a laptop or at a you know a keyboard or something there will always be something there and there'll always be something we can come out of but the the kind of spark for us that's really exciting is when, when you walk out of a great film or you come out of a great gig right and you know you want to you want to run home and you want to be like that's really given me something we went and saw um, a film called Lights Out uh, last month uh, a horror film just right. the whole mood of it just kind of put you in a certain place and then we immediately planned out our next music video from it and we started talking about songs and it just gets you fired up so that can be the the jumping off point for a lot of songs great film great game great song that kind of thing right you know i haven't seen lights out yet i know i know what the, the, the what the box in the previews now uh based off of that uh, just getting inspiration from the different things that you were just talking about. Do you ever have like a kind of like a set goal in mind, meaning like I'm going to write about this, or is it just like it just kind of comes to you, or like is it anything based? Uh, is there like a certain basis for some of the songs, or just kind of inspiration and away we go? Do you want to get that? Um, yeah, for me, it's just kind of I'll um, write all of the music first, and then I'll kind of get a feel for what I think the song should be called. Um, but as I'm writing it, I'll more often not just kind of realize that it's something that I've been thinking about um, at the time of the song, which is always really interesting because it's kind of like I discover what I'm, yeah, just dealing with or thinking about at the time. It's always really interesting. Now, I, one thing I'm curious is, is is how how you guys bring this to a live stage. I mean, is, is that a little bit more difficult or do you guys have a certain process? You just have it down now that just it seems like it's, it's nothing. It's like a, a daily thing sort of thing. It's uh, it's complicated, but I wouldn't have it any other way because there's just two of us, and we could go out and we could play and we could put things on a backing track and we could hit play and we could sing along as a lot of kind of bands do, and that's the way they work and that's fine. But we really want to do as much as we can live, so we get two other guys in, we play as a four piece, and we are very busy. So there's both keyboards, uh, there's keyboards in front of us. I'm on bass. Uh, there's live guitars, there's drums, there's a, a drum machine, like a, like pads that are hit as well. Right. So there's a lot going on and there's a lot that can go wrong. But I like the idea that if you hear a sound, it's because somebody has hit it, somebody has pressed it, somebody is telling you what to do. I think that's really important for the kind of stuff that we do. Well, you know, it's, it gives it that, that uh, we'll call it wow factor because... You know, like you said, things can go wrong, but you know, having a doing a live show, I mean, that's the that's the risk you take every time. And even if you're just a regular band, forget the sense that sort of thing. And you've jammed a million one times, things could could possibly go wrong. You got to be ready for that. And to me, just the way way you cover it and the things that can come out of it, because a lot of times you, you get gold out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't ever want to be just going through the motions and doing something easy. So when we're in practice, it's hard work, but then we do it to the point where it's kind of natural. Um, and then that's when I think you get the best show because everyone can see that you're busy and everyone can see that they, this is a complicated like operation but I don't know you, I think you get a bit more invested in it and yeah I'm really happy with the way we've gone about it now just to jump back for a second uh, just to still based on the, on the live show when you said uh, a bass and a keyboard in front of you the first thing I, I thought of right away is Getty Lee from Rush. I, I thought you were going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know it's probably kind of synonymous, but that's the one, if you're, no, if you're a rock fan, you know Rush is, that's one of the first things you think of is, is a keyboard and bass with Getty Lee. Except yeah, yeah. He, does a, he does that with his feet as well. He's triggering strings and that kind of thing. That's maybe slightly one level above uh, <laughs> where we are because there's only three of them. Yeah, he, he's just setting off string sounds with his feet, and he's like uh, playing chords with them as well. He plays like barefoot. He's walking around like that. Right. Um, <laughs> that's crazy to me. But yeah, the guy's amazing. Yeah. But um, I the one more thing about him, then we'll get then get him real quick. Is just because oh, past six months they they had a kind of behind like uh like the tour for us. I can't remember the exact name of the, of the documentary it was, but they they asked him about that. They said, well, how do you when you're doing bass and keyboard it goes? How do you how do you get the mic out of the way? And he goes, you know what? Because big Jewish nose. Because <laughs> I use that to knock it right out of the way, and we're clear. <laughs> you got to use what you got. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're gonna get to the first song uh, that uh, that I heard and Trulapi will have already, 
And this one is called Skylines by Living Dead yeah. Girl. Take this. that was living dead girl with skylines uh now this this song it's really like really enjoyed it. i know it's the first one i heard but i really enjoyed it because it just has that really really like i'm sure you said this the first time i talked about the song but it's got that really creepy aspect to it 
So it's it's cool, but it kind of makes you feel like you're, you're coming out of a 